And we are live. So welcome to the final session of Be the Catalyst for Change. Um, today's session is actually called Be the Catalyst for Change. <laughs> Yay. So creative. <clears throat> um, let's do a little recap from last session first before we get started. So last week we covered the fifth principle, which was community. And we talked about the difference between or the distinction between community and a cult. Uh, we talked about how context can either promote our personal transformation or hinder it. And we also talked about how transformation really only happens in relationship, either relationship to people or relationship to other things. There's no such thing as this, just, you don't just transform on your own without the duality of the world. Mm. Um, we had read chapter 10 on community of source movement book. And uh, mentalism was, as you participate in the world, notice if you're surrounded by community consciousness or cult consciousness. So I'd love to hear a little bit from all of you, uh, if you noticed something this week around that. Like, did you notice when you participate in community versus cult? Uh, did anything open up? Or did you just forget and get busy? <laughs> and if so, share anyway. So... Um, Who's ready to, to share a little bit about this week, if there's anything that came up around, either around cult or community, or anything else, you know, that might have come up this week that you feel could serve the space uh, that we could kind of share about, too, is, is good, too. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Crickets. You know I'm going to call on you. All right, there we go. Wait, we got um, Shania. So, um... Interesting enough, we're still doing the performance reviews, and my boss called me in to prep me on how I should write them. And it was all about what, um, it wasn't all about, let me rephrase that, it was focused on how to write it so that you have documentation and point out what people didn't do. And so it was very interesting because typically I would like, you know, speak up and go, what, you know, I, how about the other 999 things that they did great um, versus this one thing, right? We were talking about courage, for example. And so, you know, it's just that whole, and each person is different. As a boss, I'm sure you guys know um, what works for somebody, you know, doesn't work for another. And, you know, you got to balance, you get the productivity out of people. So I just felt that it was so cult focused, you know, to exclude people because it all, it comes down to, who's going to be top ranked and who's going to get the most money. And, you know, you got, it's this whole thing about, you know, I don't know. It's just very interesting. So that was very cult like, and then community, I got to be in uh, Fort Lauderdale. I just got back this morning for graduation on Sunday. Yay. So yes, I saw you there. At <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, so different and I really was thinking about you know what you're talking about in the two different worlds and you know one of the things that I know I'm challenged with is um, you know balancing that right but I think that awareness is helpful <clears throat> what what um what was it that if you were to look back, what was it that had you not say anything about the way that you felt about the perform the way the performance reviews were conducted? I felt that I needed to better understand where she was coming from um, before and put be mindful before I just voice my opinion. So that's what I felt. So, so, okay, well, let me think, kind of digest what she's saying. And again, I was thinking about the whole 
cult community <laughs> and, and going, wow, this one. And I wanted to kind of analyze it that way with her, but she wouldn't have gotten it. So, you know, but. So do you think that, that there's a place somewhere where you could actually be a contribution even now in hindsight? And is there something that would stop you from that? Like I wanted you to kind of look a little <clears throat> deeper because so yes i think that that's that balance i was talking about so you know hearing her valuing her and what she was coming from but being able to also value my thoughts and merge that together do you feel like you have a, a grip or a clarity on what her intention was? Like what her, cause I'm sure like she's showing you how to do something and she has a certain, what I'm hearing is like a clash of interpretations. So like your interpretation is this way and her interpretation of how things are done is another way. Do you feel like you, you at least have clarity on what her true vision and purpose was in designing it that way? Yes, I do. And so, um, you know, she comes from a very corporate world and environment. And um, I've been an entrepreneur, so we have very differing philosophies, management philosophies. And, um, but at times they're exactly alike online too. So, yeah. you know, um, but that's that, that, you know, recognizing that cult, but infusing that community piece. So that's that that's that balance I'm talking about. Got it. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, anyone else ready to share? Yes, Jacqueline. So um, I also had a. I ran into my old boss, um, and it was interesting. We live on the same street. <laughs> so um and so we were talking about work and and it, again it was very cultish kind of the the feeling it's like you know everybody who works there is and there's a leader that everybody is supposed to almost bow down to like you either love him or you hate him but most people who work for him don't really like him um and so that's brought things out in the news and so anyway it just brought back a lot of um, just um, feelings about having worked there and just feeling so free that I'm no longer there and a lot of times even though um, I work a lot of hours I feel unemployed because I'm doing what I love so I mean it, that's like I'm like I don't know. It, it feels so good. And the fact that she kind of was like, yeah, maybe I'll be there and doing a similar thing in a couple of years was the first time she's ever kind of broken down that facade of, oh, everything's great. Everything's perfect. Um, and along with that, we had community where my um, sisters and their family and everybody um, came over for the 4th of July. Um, and we were at the pool, and so we were including, like, other kids and other neighbors and, and what was going on. So it was a real sense of, hey, let's have fun together. Let's do this together. No one was excluded. No one was, you know, more or less than. So it was funny because at the same place, having both community and cult together was, like, a really weird feeling. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting how um, a lot of times in, in like structural like corporations or the political environment or institutions, you know, things like that um, can really tend to become this cultish consciousness, um, yeah. you know, because it's not only is, are a lot of people, they are already afraid that if they do something or speak up or whatever, that they're going to just lose your job. Like, that's like almost the initial, that's like the, the, the groundwork for any business almost. It's like, well, you work for me, so if you don't behave, you can get fired. Right. Which is, which is very interesting, you know? Yeah. And, you know, 
while that's a truth in most cases, it doesn't have to be the underlying context. You know, the underlying context is you know contribution. Like it, it was funny. We had a we have a a new um, receptionist, and she had a ropes course on Monday, and she just took it upon herself to replace herself with volunteers from the community. <laughs> And like what other, you know, corporate environment does that? Where it's like, oh yeah, so I have someone else coming in and answering the phones. I'm not going to be here. But it's such a beautiful space uh, of just like taking that ownership and also feeling the freedom to create within. You know, be creative. So um, yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Hey, Ruth. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I had an experience this weekend that sort of woke me up to the fact that my condo association is very cultish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one that you didn't get the position in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I understand why I don't want to be in it, you know? Yeah. No, I was, I went to visit a friend at her cottage which is an association of cottages. There's, they all own common land together, thus an association. Well, I just kept listening to, there was a big riff about fireworks getting canceled and people upset about that. And I listened about how one neighbor was putting pressure on other neighbors to decorate in a certain way or just be this, that. So it, it really <laughs> put a damper on my weekend. I went there to have a good time, you know. But I came home and I thought, it sunk in with me a little while after that. Oh my God, my you know my association is very cultious, and I have the uh, chart here. I've seen uh, neighbor relationships ruined. I've had tension with some people. So now that I'm not on the board, it's like I can walk outside the door and you know feel more free. <laughs> um, you live in a context of fear, guilt, and anger. You know if you're not following the if you're not a following the bylaws and the policies set by the board you're going to have someone after you so you're expected to be uniform in that behavior no mistakes are allowed <laughs> you, know, you get in trouble or a fine and just on and on and on and I and uh, I thought no wonder I don't feel comfortable this does not fit my vision and so it's you know that just came to me today I thought okay now I understand so anyway, their associ associations are necessary, but they, they have their drawbacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it kind of brings it to the drift, you know, mm -hmm. like um, we talk about the drift and the training and right. the drift is really uh, cult consciousness on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And that is, I like making up percentages, so I'm going to make up one. <laughs> I mean, that's like 98% of our... <laughs> <laughs> of the world almost you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. that are coming from that that mentality like we're we're actually like trained that way on some level environmentally and through our family and teachers or whatever and so it is very interesting that you know when you come in for instance to the gratitude training and you know we promote critical thinking and for you finding out who you are and what what is important to you and what's your vision and all these things that it's, I think it's just actually so ironic that that is what gets the cult label sometimes, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like, of course, because the 98% are like, oh, that's different. We got to call it something, yeah. you know, and you better not do that. Mm -hmm. You're going to change or you're, you know, they're brainwashing you, whatever it is. And I just think it's, I think it's hilarious. And, you know, most of you have, done the trainings and also gotten to a level of like consciousness where it's like we project everything. And especially in this course, it's like we talk about, I create everything. So that means that everything I'm putting out is something that's either going on internally for me or a lesson or whatever. So it makes sense that that's what they would come up with the word cult because it's directly coming from their consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very rare to, for someone to come in the training and be like, other when they make jokes, but oh my God, this is a cult. Like it doesn't even 
come up. It comes up from people that haven't even done it, mm -hmm. which is hilarious yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. Our um, HOA this week came and delivered a notice. And the house that I live in is in my roommate's name. And the lady gave me the paper. She says, are you Christy? I said, no. She's like, can you give this to her? And I, I need her to uh, vote yes on these six things and mail it to whatever. So not only does she give us the, give me the ballot to hand to the, the actual homeowner, but she said, I need, she needs to vote yes on these. <laughs> so and I told my roommate who's done the training and we had a colorful conversation <laughs> about that. So she, she was mad. She was like, what was that lady? It was just kind of weird. Yeah. To me, it just, it felt so awkward. <laughs> but see, that's, it kind of goes back though, like Shania, what you were talking about, there was an uneasiness, maybe, I mean, I'm projecting, there was an uneasiness mm -hmm. for me in that conversation that maybe that's similar to what you were experiencing with your boss. Like in that moment, I could have said to the lady, um, well, we'll look it over and we'll vote how we choose. I could have said one sentence and it could have been graceful and eloquent and kind, but instead mm -hmm. I went and talked shit about it with my roommate. <laughs> I was like, yeah, so um, I don't know, that little bit of courage, I mean, I think that's just what Joe was saying, like look at that moment of where we actually speak well, out it's about that it. that looking good stuff that keeps showing up, you yeah. know, like we're worried what people are gonna think or that we're gonna create uncomfortableness in another. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, well, she'll be, a, I can probably do it. I can dare to do it, but I, I'm gonna make her uncomfortable because she doesn't, so we hold people small too, yeah. you know? So thank you, Ruth. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Sean, you got something for us? Uh, I got nothing this week. Um, kind of just got busy with the week and kind of forgot about things. All right. That's awesome. That falls into the category. Or did you just forget? <laughs> that's me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> let's get started. So be the catalyst for change. What do we really mean by that? So we've obviously talked about a lot of things. We've talked about transforming our thinking in a way that we kind of recreate our ground zero so that we create the things that we want. And, you know, I kind of have it as a fundamental uh, belief in this course is that we want to make a difference in the world and we want peace and we want, you know, goodness and you know be the change that's why it's called that so that's kind of what we've been doing to promote peace and love so change our thinking to promote peace and love so over the last four weeks i'm going to eight weeks i'm going to just do a quick little recap so you guys can kind of re-enter all that and, and assimilate all the stuff so in the first week we talked about the law of mentalism so i'm just going to kind of go on some of the points law of mentalism is the first of the seven universal laws which basically says that everything is mine, the universe is mental, and that everything that you think manifests. So if we really start paying attention to that, everything that we think manifests, then we probably would want to get a little bit more rigorous with our thinking, you know? Uh, we also went through, uh, we talked about our most effective self. Like, how do I become the most, my most effective self, living on purpose and making the biggest difference? So we went there a little bit. Uh, we talked about getting connected to vision. Uh, we did a stairway to heaven meditation. And then, um, let's see, did all of you have a call with me? Let me see. Yeah, all of you actually did. Awesome. So you all had a, a vision call with me. And we got connected to the ground zero and like, you know, what do we want to plant in our so soil so that we become the context to uh, manifest what it is that we want to manifest? Okay, we also then went over the principles of source movement, which was the first session was integrity. And we talked about that we're always only one conversation away from being our word. So there's always just something that is like, like one conversation away from being our word. Um, we did an integrity check to kind of see where we're at. Uh, you know, when we talk about integrity, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm a woman of my word. And then when we really start looking, like maybe we're not, you know, and, and start being willing to start looking there. We talked about the because and tool, which was a way to replace your becauses 
when you blame things on, 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 other, on other things and use and, and that kind of helps you uncollapse your stories about an event with the actual event. And when you do that, it creates enormous freedom and you can start redefining how you see things. <clears throat> uh, we talked about responsibility, uh, responding to life as if I create it. And that's something that if you can take away one thing <laughs> from this course, yes. it's that. Begin to respond to life as if you created it. Because when you start really looking, a lot of the times all we do is react to things that we think are happening to us. So when you start responding as if you're creating it, it completely changes the whole game. Um, gratitude. We talked about gratitude. We talked about comparative gratitude versus um, declarative gratitude in the future and then a state of gratitude, which is sort of like always in the present moment. We talked about service and how the survival context applies to service, uh, being right, looking good, being safe, and being in control. And we looked at how we are being in service. Like, where are we actually coming from? What is our context or, you know, what's our come from when we are in service? Are we coming from the survival context or are we simply coming from a pure space? Um, community. We looked at what context is present in community and the difference between cult and community, which we just talked about again. And... <clears throat> And if you have any questions about anything of any of this right now that we kind of went through or something just came up as far as me sharing about it, speak now or forever hold your peace because I'm ready to graduate you. <laughs> and uh, J Jacqueline, I will ask them to close their eyes for a little bit, but you, you better not, okay? <laughs> just keep driving, <laughs> Jackie. Awesome. Okay, so we are ready. So I want to just say something real quick, too. Um, there were actually 12 people signed up for this course. So before you close your eyes, I just want to acknowledge you for being here. Um, even though people have their every intention and pay in full to be somewhere, it's not always easy. You know, it's uh, life keeps lifing and it's very easy to kind of put an hour a webinar on the sidelines and go, you know what, I just don't have time. And you guys have been super consistent and here and contributing. So thank you for that. Now, I want you to actually close your eyes unless you're driving. <laughs> and um, because the reason I want you to close your eyes is because it's actually easier to hear and accept acknowledgements when your eyes are closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Distractions tend to shield our heart. So again, I really want to acknowledge you, each and every one of you, for your commitment, for your participation. I want to acknowledge you for your vulnerability and being willing to share on this call and become friends and connected with everyone. I want to acknowledge you for your love and the love that you not only share on this call, but that I know from knowing you for eight weeks like this, that you do share in your family, with your friends, in your community, at work. I want to acknowledge you for your willingness and your openness. I want to acknowledge you for your courage. And for anyone that's watching the video, and you have not done the gratitude training, I especially want to acknowledge you for your courage. I want to acknowledge you for your brilliance and really for being the change and being willing to being the change because it's quite an undertaking sometimes. But once we go there fully 100%, it becomes effortless. I want to specifically acknowledge Jackie and Ruth for being, attending every single session. 
that is an accomplishment. And I just want you to really take that in. And not, not that the other two on this call or whoever else is on is bad and wrong. <laughs> but there's always stuff that happens in life and we have circumstances. And you guys made it happen anyway. So I want to acknowledge you for that. Now keep your eyes closed. So I want to welcome you to Source Movement. You have actually now officially graduated from the course Be the Catalyst for Change, and you have earned a new title. You've earned the title Creative Peacemaker. Now, I don't take this title lightly because it is what I have on my business card, and I live by it every day. And I never had an intention to start sharing that title with other people until I started this course and I realized that that's what we are becoming, creative peacemakers. I have some people actually that have taken this course that not put that on their business card even. So I invite you to live as the change to inspire others to awaken and promote peace. You are now a creative peacemaker. So take a second before you open your eyes to imagine what this means to you as you go about life after this course. Whether you use the title or not, what does it mean for you to move about the world from now on as a creative peacemaker or as a catalyst for change? And imagine yourself. And when you're done, open your eyes. <laughs> and I want to really thank you. You know, and for me, it's such an honor. I love, I love this course. <laughs> I love doing this on Wednesday nights. Um, I love having Holly here too, having Holly here. And Holly's actually going to start teaching this class too. So there'll be two of us and, you know, we'll alternate and, and have fun with it. And, um, um, I would love to hear a little bit from you guys, just what has, like, if you think back on the eight weeks that you've been in this course, like, what are the things that you've seen, or are there things that have opened up for you, or, you know, like, how has it, you know, manifested or not manifested <laughs> in your life, and what do you feel about being a creative peacemaker moving forward, like, that kind of sharing, like, what has this course been for you, and what do you think you can take away uh, into your life from now on. So whoever's ready to um, share, I'll unmute you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, receiving the title Creative Peacemaker brought a lot of joy to me. And um, so I, I just saw myself going forward and feeling joyful feeling playful I mean, if I'm, cre I'm creating peace. Uh, so that just, ma that makes me very happy to think about. Um, there, as far as the various concepts, I, I've enjoyed the, I, I've enjoyed, first of all, I read the book before I took the class and then and then just hearing your concepts and understanding them. The idea of the responding as though I'm creative, that's, uh, that definitely is uh, very meaningful to me. Um, my desire also is to live in integrity. That has definitely sunk in with me. And that, you know, I want that to be, you know, I want that being. <laughs> so, um, well, you, 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 know, you committed to all eight weeks and you were here all eight weeks. So congratulations. <laughs> you know, I can't, I, you know, it's, uh, I could say more and more, but it's just been great. And I really appreciate learning from you. Awesome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you in here too. Awesome. Okay. So who's next? Yes. 
So it's interesting because it's like, okay, what's after for me? Because, um, of course, I did um, Masterful Living. And what this course has done for me is allowed me to bridge what the experience of myself through the training to the community, to, to the world. And put, seeing, um, opening that up for me, you know, um, to have that vision beyond just me being happy and just me, you know, so that's what this course has done this last eight weeks. And awesome. um, I thank you for that. And I thank you for that, <laughs> because the butterfly effect is about to begin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's begun. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing what we can all create and what we are creating by just kind of getting out of our own way and seeing the world as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And Jackie. So, um, yeah, that title really resonated um, with me and also the catalyst for change because um, as a therapist, that's what I do. I change, well, I assist people to change their own lives, um, which has been a really powerful, um, like continued tools in my arsenal and being able to weave in um, things that um, I've learned from the course and ML and gratitude. I sound real, real smart. It's really great. So. <laughs> um, thank you for that because it is uh, so insightful how a, a lot of these tenants are so helpful for other people and the people, well, the people that I've, I've worked with. Um, and having some monkeys that are clients has been awesome because you can speak a different language um, in session. And like the two thing, uh, therapy and um, gratitude has really made some powerful changes in, in people's lives. And so that's really awesome and humbling and yeah, an amazing, yeah. Just amazing. Cool. A lot of words. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like being the catalyst for change with a client <clears throat> like that, even that creative peacemaker piece, because it's in your job and, and, and when we do want to make a difference, we actually have to be creative, and especially in your job, because you're, you don't even know what's coming next all the time from people usually, you know, like they're sharing <laughs> And you have to just be creative with how you have to go with all the resources and all the knowledge and create something every time. It's not like you're just like delivering the same thing over and over. So, um, you know, I like that, that, you know, that title resonates with you because I could see how that would resonate too. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, is Sean there? He's hiding. <laughs> he's he's snuck he snuck away. <laughs> Where did he go? Did he make a note? No, all right, we'll wait. See. <laughs> I hope he didn't like fall down or something. <laughs> he didn't even know. He didn't even know. No, I meant <laughs> I meant like type a note. <laughs> out to lunch. Yeah, out to lunch. I'll be back. <laughs> all right, well we'll see if he comes back and we'll corner him. <laughs> Um, it's so party. it's a cat party. Look at that. <laughs> Cute cats everywhere. So what's next is the question, right? What's next? So, <clears throat> um, the next eight week be the catalyst for change course is scheduled for September 20th. Um, we actually, if you believe that this course will support any of your friends and family, because as you know, it is open for anyone that hasn't done the trainings too. And even people on your ML team that you might, you know, you might be done with ML and they're kind of starting to sound a little drifty or whatever. 
and you think it will support them, we actually do a $100 referral fee for people that have done the course that enroll someone. So anyone that you enroll in this course in the future and you put your name as the referral, um, you actually get $100 each time. So that's kind of cool. Um, also, um, it's like you get a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, uh, let's see. So the way that they can enroll is uh, gratitude um, training dot com slash catalyst. That's where they can enroll for this course. So gratitude training dot com slash catalyst. There's also a link on the very front page that says "Be the Catalyst for Change," uh, and you can click on that. And uh, let's see. You all got a part one pass. Have you guys used it for someone yet, or do you still have it? No, hold on. Let me unmute you. Hold on. Go ahead. I still have mine. You have yours? Yeah. Jackie, you have yours? I still have mine. Yeah. Okay. Try to okay. Awesome. Um, so obviously you've all done part one. So give it to someone, share the love, enroll someone, um, which actually brings us to the homework. <gasps> it's the last session and there's homework. Yay! Are you kidding me? <laughs> your homework is and you know that it's always optional enroll one person in the next be the catalyst for change webinar starting September 20th and receive the hundred dollar referral fee well you can enroll more than one if you want of course um, actually this course is that one's filling up pretty quick um, I think there's already like 15 people or something enrolled and we, we do cap it at some point um, I'm also going to send you a survey and I would so appreciate if you share your experience of the course because I can use that as we uh, talk about it for other people and also feedback any feedback you have that you that would support us in in getting better and you know all that good stuff feedback is gold and your mentalism homework is um, Continue to be aware of being the catalyst for change. Really think about how you move about the world. Are you being a creative peacemaker? Are you bringing joy and peace wherever you go? Um, when you're not, are you creating, you know, like how can you shift into creating that peace and joy and love? He's back. Hi. <laughs> you're going to have to look at the recording. <laughs> Oh, no. Who's that? Who's that? Okay. I, one of my sons is having a little meltdown right now, so I was trying oh, to help okay. him get him to sleep. <laughs> well, you can you can go back and watch in. We basically we're closing out right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have anything you want to share from the whole course. Anything that opened up that we missed from you? Um, no, I think um, I think it was great. I think that I made some good distinctions. I think the because and tool was a great thing for me to hear about, um, and just being. Um, um, in a space where th th this sort of thinking is um, is more um, commonplace, it was good for me awesome. just to get that reinforcement every week. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Um, so um, I was just telling everyone that our next course is September 20th. And if you enroll anyone into the Catalyst for Change, since you've taken it, you actually get a $100 referral fee anytime you enroll someone. So it's actually a nice little present reward, reward. <laughs> and uh so mentalism homework be aware of being the catalyst for change how do you move about the world pay attention to what you create around you and really start gauging like are you making a difference you know and this is where the creative com part comes in in peacemaker is if you're not then what can you create differently like how can you be creatively thinking about switching it up and not being attached to you know, like we're not going to say be a static peacemaker because that's going to be really difficult. <laughs> you want to be a dynamic, creative peacemaker, okay? <laughs> so, um, so we're ending a little early today, but I'm sure you guys are okay with that. Um, does anyone have anything you want to say before we uh, close out? Is it good? Complete. <laughs> <laughs> How old is he? That one's three. Oh, yeah. just I, got three. A, I got a three-year-old at home too. I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. Well, thank you so much. And, and again, like, don't you feel like you get close even though it's video? Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Yes. It, it always yes. shocks me, you know. Like, I feel like I know you guys. Like, we could just be sitting at a dinner table right now having dinner, you know. <laughs> so thank you for that. And I love you. And have a beautiful, beautiful night. And I'm sure I'll see you around soon. Okay. Thank all you, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye